welcome back, guys, to the first episode of the year. We have just been recording for 16 minutes, and I didn't have my mic plugged in. So it sounded like Jordan was chatting to herself. So that was great. So we're starting again, but welcome back. So we're here just for a catch-up. Let's discuss what we've missed since the end of the season and what we got to look forward to. So, Jordan. Yes. Um, let's get started with Team Principal City season. Mm. Lots um, of people moving. Obviously, lots of moves. The one we expected was obviously Ferrari, them getting a new team principal. I think it was a given. Um, and I think we all gathered it was going to be Frederick Fasseur. Yeah, definitely. Um, right call in my mind. I think it's probably going to make Charles number one. I don't know if that. Charles uh... was number one anyway. Yeah, I know, but officially number one. Um, so it's going to be a telling season for Carlos, I guess, because if he's out qualifying Charles on the regular, then the questions will be raised, and I think that's where he lacks more in one lap pace to Charles. You've got the aspect of their contracts. Both of their contracts run out end of 2024. Mm. So either... They're going to be looking to bring in a rookie, um, which have got a few talented ones in F2. You've obviously got Robert on the side waiting. Um, but yeah, I think obviously Charles is golden boy for Ferrari because obviously he's been in the FDA. He's worked his way up, whatever. Um, but obviously Carlos, he has been to other teams. He's not born and bred Ferrari. Mm that makes sense um but yeah i think it'll be an interesting year it will all go towards their contracts um and i think about halfway through this season we'll know who is number one for sure who else moved who went to alpha um, so seidel has gone to alpha hasn't he as ceo isn't it yes um didn't expect it did not expect it no no Obviously, he's been at, been at McLaren, um, and he seemed happy there, given away, like, he weren't happy. Obviously, they had a rougher year last year than the year before, but obviously, new car, that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I don't think, like, Zach Brown expected it either. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I think it's a good move for him. I think it's a, it'll be a telling move. I, I, I don't know if it'll work we'll have to wait and see i guess um but it'll be interesting to see for sure um and then obviously we got valtteri and james going to williams which was a bigger shock i'd say oh yeah definitely i think big loss to mercedes um i don't know who they're gonna have as their head strategist i don't think they'll struggle without him um because he's been at the team for a long time um, so they know like his way of thinking and all stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a step up. Um, him becoming team principal, and I think maybe that's what Williams need. Yeah. They need someone who is good in all areas, really. And it'll be kind of in the first couple of months of the season, we'll be able to tell if he's. If he's good at not at everything rather than just strategy. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, yeah, looking forward to hearing Alex, it's James. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. It is going to be nice. Um, I want him to do well. Yeah, um, um, and then move? McLaren, they have Andrea yes. Stella. Yes. So they've promoted within. Yeah, I had no idea who the hell he was. So... I, I heard of him before, yeah. but when they announced him, I was like, really? Like, you're really promoting, like, women? Like, do you not want to get someone, like, on the Ruben. outside? And then I was watching like, the old Drive to Survive, like, the f either first or second season. It's when Lando comes into it for the 2019 season, mm -hmm. and you can see Andrea Stella standing with Zach, and I'm like, ah, now I know who he is. <laughs> He's been with the team for quite a while, so okay. I don't know how he would do, but again, be interesting. Yeah, definitely. 
It will. It will be. Um, especially as he's kind of unheard of. Not well, probably not within McLaren, but from the outside. Yeah, no. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. And then we've got a lot of contracts up, haven't we? Um, yes. And it's going to be a lot of big seasons for some drivers. Yes. Um, I think the biggest one is obviously Lewis. Will he stay? Will he go? What's What's going to happen? Um, Toto seems convinced he's going to sign on for a couple more years, but I think it's more of a wait until you see how the car is. Um, yeah. I mean... I, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say he's going to retire this year because I will be in pieces. I think had he won it this year, I know obviously that was nowhere near going to happen, but had Mercedes got it right and he won it this year, I think he'd retired this year. And then you've got the likes of Yuki. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the rookies, apart from Piastri. Yeah, all the rookies apart from Piastri. And then you've got um, K-Mag and Nico Hulkenberg. Mm. I don't think there's anyone else. I don't think so. I don't think so. VB's gone up to 24. Um, yeah, K-Mag and... Oh. Um, so, um, show Guan Yu. Oh, he's out as well, isn't he? Okay, so... There's seven, yeah. Let me just double check. Okay. Um, I'd say the ones we mentioned yeah. so far, Yuki's the big one for me. Yeah. He's lost a very uh, good teammate, he's... but he's also gained a very good teammate. So yes. he has to outperform yeah. the freeze, and he just has to stay out of trouble, no silly mistakes, and prove that he can be a very good consistent racer yeah i think it's one of those things obviously he is now kind of like the driver at alpha towery mm -hmm. because obviously he's known the past couple of years like the cars um but then if you look back he has made a lot of mistakes um and i do think he's very lucky to be here he's very lucky to have a seat really I, I think so, yeah, because he has made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. First year, I kind of give him like a year, you know, like fair play. Um, but second year is a bit more like a redemption year, you know, um, less crashing, um, higher qualifying. Obviously, it's a bit tough because obviously it's a new car. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think he's lucky to be here. And I think it will show this year either he'll perform the best he's ever performed or he will just not perform good. Yeah, I think he lacks composure in certain situations. Um, still got to work on his raging and his anger. Like I was watching one, some like the drive radio he's back from last year, and like his his engineer came on the radio and asked him how the balance was, which like understeer oversteer sort of thing, and how you feel in the car. And he just, he was like, I don't know, let me write, let me race. And it's like, come on, mate, it's practice. He's asking you for feedback. Like, that's what you're paid to do. Like, it's a team. You have to give feedback to your engineer so you can make the car go faster. Like, and I don't know. I think that's what I'd expect from season one, Yuki. But if he's still doing that in season three and just instantly getting angry and annoyed, I think you've got to ask the question is, is he mentally up to the challenge? The thing is... Like, people make a joke about, like, his anger or whatever. Yes, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's not. But when you're potentially putting the team at a disadvantage because you're not telling them anything about the car whilst you're driving the car, it's like, well, how can they... I don't know, if they called him in, I don't know, 10 minutes into free practice two mm. and they wanted to change some stuff... They don't know what to prepare whilst he's coming in because yeah. it's like they haven't been told anything. Yeah, like Max um, did it only... before um, and Martin Brundle mm -hmm. slated him on, um, I think it was practice one at Silverstone or something, like in 2017 or 18. Um, I'll, try, yeah. I'll try and find it. And um, the engineer asked for feedback and Max just went, oh, it's terrible, nothing works, like it's awful. And Martin just went, oh, just go and park it in the garage then, mate, if you're not going to be helpful. And, like, you know, you know, so it's like, clearly, 
the, the engineers have got a job to do, so you've got to help them do that job because you expect them to do their job for you as well. So, yeah, yeah. You've, you've just got to give feedback and direction. So, hopefully, it will work for him. But I think he might risk getting absolutely outshone by the freeze just because the freeze is fast everywhere he's been you know yeah every every championship he's been in he's been fast formula two formula e it's a bit like well now he's given a shot in the big league yeah like we've already seen what he can do can do with no preparation so what can he do with preparation like you can see on his instagram he's working hard it'll be interesting but i am rooting for him I think he will do better than Yuki. And then we got Hulk obviously being back with K Mag, so that's gonna be great. I f- I can see a bromance forming with those two, um, just because everyone thought they hated each other. I was literally watching the episode last night on Drive to Survive yeah. about the relationship between those two, and um, like Hulk and Berg turned around at one point and was like, "Who's Hass?" And now I'm like, a few years later, you're now driving for him. Yeah. (laughs) Like, and your teammate is K-Mag. Like, you just don't get on. And you can say that all you want. You can say you do. You've you've spoke about it, whatever. They will still have that rivalry there. They always will have it. And I think has a very stupid or they're very clever to pair them together. I think they're very clever. Yeah, but you're, you're a bit um, biased. Okay, let's ignore Hulkenberg then, because we all know I like Hulkenberg. Fair enough, I think he's going to do well. But K-Mag's fast, and we know that, and we know from previous years and previous standard appearances that Hulkenberg is still fast. Um, so I think if the car's right, I, I think they could be a strong midfield pairing. Is that a, is that a fair, unbiased remark for you jordan <laughs> i think they'll push each other yeah i think because obviously that rivalry is there they'll want to push each other but it's at that point they can't push each other where it gets stupid yeah it won't be a k-mag grosjean I, I don't think it'll be that bad mm. but it's definitely one lineup that i'm probably more focused on like Red Bull, um, Ferrari, Mercedes, the ones which haven't changed, I'm a bit like, hmm. like especially top teams, you're like, yeah, crap on. Um, but for like Haas, um, McLaren, um, even Alfa Romeo, even though they haven't changed their lineup, you've got Guan Yu Shou, who is into his second year, and then you've got Bottas, whose second year will be at Alfa. So there's quite a few lineups where it, we're going to be watching, see how the pairing goes and yeah. if they can help each other as well. I think there's going to be a different rivalry this year that I don't think F1 is prepared for. Go on. All right, should we do our, should we do our three predictions? And then I'll say it. God. Okay, so me and Jordan right. and I are going to predict three things that are going to happen this year. <laughs> So go. Or do you want me Can to we first? just be clear that Jack sprung this on me as we st- like before we start recording? So I have no idea what I'm about to say. <laughs> Whereas Jack has already thought two of his. So let's just make that clear. All right. Okay. Fine. Um, okay. So my one prediction for this year is Lando and Oscar are actually gonna have a bit of a rivalry, and I think they will have a few on-track collisions. Because they're both very oh, okay. fast. They're both very fast. They're both mentally very driven, and they both want to win. Lando, as we know from the last two years with Danny Rick, does not like being told to get out of the way. And I think there will be times where he will ignore a team order. I can see Lando becoming the bad boy this year. Mm-hmm. I do too. Oh God! Any prediction? Anything? I think that there will be. Four teams, seven drivers who are fighting for the championship. Who's the one that you're leaving out? 
Because that means you're that means you're um, dropping one drop. For it. Um, the one I'm leaving out is uh, Gasly. You think you think Alpine? You think Ocon is going to be in a title fight? Well, no. I think he will have consistent finishes. So you know how George was in top five for yeah. the majority of the year. Yeah. I think Ocon might be edging towards that top five. Okay, okay. When we've done our predictions, fourth. I've got news for you on Alpine, actually. Exclusive news that probably millions of people know, but still. Um, okay, I'll, I'll back that then. I think, yeah, that's fair enough. Because Ocon's quick. Ocon's aggressive, though. Um, yeah. Okay. My second prediction for the season is Fernando Podium, Alonso Podium, at one point in the season. You uh, do realise he's in Aston Martin, right? Mm-hmm. Not saying, you know. I, I'm, but I'm from where their car was last year, oh, I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Nick De Vries. First three races. First three races, okay. <laughs> That's I've got high one. expectations. Okay. That is a good one. Um, my third and final one for the season is... Um, Le... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. There's go- <laughs> I think Lewis will win again. But is that an easy one? Is that an easy prediction? Well, he thought he'd win year. last year, but he didn't. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to put Lewis to win again. What, just a race? Yeah. Oh, do you want me to yeah. specify the number of races? I th- Okay, four. Four. He's going to win four races. Four races. Yeah. I'm going to think who hasn't had their first win. I want to do a first win. <clears throat> the sorry. only logical choice to me would be Lando. I think I think he might get his first win this year. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, we're all very convinced that Alpine are going to be quick, aren't we? Yeah. But yeah. did you know there is a driver feud already? So I apparently, um, Gasly's family and o- um, Ocon's family hate each other and can't be at the same race, we- race weekend together. Now, I don't know if that's true. Is that because of Pierre and Esteban? Well, that's because the thing they. I don't know. They they don't have the best relationship. They do now. Like like yeah. Okay. Um, Gasly and. Why can't they get on? I mean, the first thing that came up with. <laughs> you know, it is true. It is true. That it genuinely is true. Um, Alpine's absurd move to solve Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon's family feud. There, there genuinely is one. Um, Love it. Apparently, they were friends in karting. Their relationship ended <clears throat> as friends, obviously, um, because, <laughs> because of on-track collisions um, throughout their career. So apparently one of them turned around and said, we're not friends. It's feeling a bit like Nico and Lewis here. I need a bit of drama in my life. Yeah. Really. Oh, yeah, they've been form- informed they can have family at only two events a year and that the two families cannot attend the same races. But it's always Ocon, actually. If you look at it, factually, Perez and Ocon didn't get on. Alonso and Ocon, I, I'm not going to lie, I think Ocon was very dirty at some points last year to Alonso. They didn't get on. You're also forgetting, even though they weren't teammates, Max and Ocon. Didn't get on. Although that was Max being a knob. I'm not gonna lie. That Bra- whoever defends Max for that Brazil crash with Ocon is stupid. Genuinely, looking at the camera, you are stupid. <laughs> it was entirely Max's fault. So that one wasn't Ocon's fault, but he hasn't had the best relationship with any teammate, really. No, no, I agree. Mm, yeah, yeah, they could have a feud, but they've already got one, so that's not a prediction. It's gonna be a, a, tr- a telling one, but I hope they both do well. They're both good drivers, but yeah. Life goes on. Together? Yeah, maybe not. Sergeant. Him and Albon. Um. It all depends on the car, doesn't it? They have to have a good car this year. Yeah, I think I think that's a big factor. Um, 
obviously we expect um, Alex to do better. Mm. Um, and I don't see Logan, no offence, outperforming Alex. Sergeant's just got to be matching Albon, I think, because yeah, yeah. he's still a rookie, but it, like, what is it? The game's the game, isn't it? I, you're still there to do a job, so he's got to prove that he can do it at points, I'd say. But thank you for watching, guys. Always a pleasure, and we will see you next episode. Bye.